Welcome to Still Plays Galaxy of Heroes. This is Grand Arena, the second match, second week, season 37. We won last round to continue our Kyber 2 streak, and it was one I didn't feel great about, but my defense was able to lock it down. So front territory here, this was all one shot. Back territory, you can see Maul still standing. So he gets to hold, the rest of them fall down. Up top... You can see several holds, one from Grievous, one from Boss. Doesn't even attempt this Sana squad that does not have an activated data ground. I just wanted her to look scary. And then Cyan here unattacked. So that one I feel like I got away with one because I really played the fleet portion poorly. I feel like I did pretty decently on the squads. But with fleets, I he put both Executor and Profundity down and I just slipped up in my thinking and for, forgot I could just two hit the Executor. And I s used my fleets in an impractical manner, which uh, set me up to put me in a position where I could have lost had he been able to clear me. Now today my opponent is Howler. This is where the win streak is going to end. He's already attacked, so I know what I'm going to have to try and do, but it's not going to happen. There's no way I'm going to match his banners. We'll talk about it in a minute. But here's where the bracket is looking with the current set of winners. My opponent has about 600k more GP than me, Zeta, which is kind of in line with a lot of these winners, except there's one guy here at 10 million GP. Zetas, we're going to skip that hardly means anything anymore. Omicrons were tied and basically tied with everyone else in this sector. Whoa. And just, I wanna, I didn't notice this last round, but I wanna show this to you guys because I just noticed one of the guys off screen here, uh, Iavo. Look at the number of Omicrons this guy has. That's nuts. I've never seen that many Grand Arena. He probably has all the Grand Arena Omicrons. It uh, doesn't seem to matter. I don't know how engaged he is with the game mode. He didn't strike me in any of my earlier analysis, but uh, I just noticed that. Now, with the back on track, my opponent has seven GLs. Everyone else in the winner's bracket has seven GLs. The two players that uh, have less than seven GLs lost. So there's two players with six GLs. One of them was my opponent from last round that I beat. Relics, my opponents at 153 which is right in the middle of this bracket you can see some of the higher ones at the 180s but 150 was kind of the mode of what was going on here gear 12 units whatever gear 11 plus he's a little shallow but not terribly shallow with the relic distribution you can see he's got a lot of tier 5 a lot of tier 7 basically double the tier 7 of me and tier eight's a few more. So he's a little higher end, and these are some of the rosters where you can I start having a little bit more trouble when we get these very top heavy relic rosters. Six stop mods, we don't get much help because this guy has great mods. He and with the counts as well, he's got over double the 25 plus speed mods. 20 plus, he's got a slight edge, and the 15 plus were basically neck and neck, and his averages are better than mine. Everything is strong on this roster, even the Datacrons, which lately has been one of my strong points. Not going to get any help here. He's got six level nine Datacrons. He's got 40 count overall and a bunch of the level six to eight, which is all going to help give him those extra stats and bonuses. All the GLs, the modding looks solid. And as we move into the Omicron portion, he's got three on Melgus. One on Radis. He doesn't have the Iden one, which I guess for maybe his roster, he's kind of like a relic or nothing kind of guy, which with the strength that he has is perfectly fine. Uh, Star Killer, only one. Dash doesn't have it. Wampa, no Savage, but he does have the Treya. He does have Dr. Afra. And basically everyone in this winner's round has Afra. I would assume that he has the Afra Datacron as well. And then he's got all three on Swallow, but he has Ray, so that makes a bit of sense. And then, and Swallow has 300 speed, so we'll use him as a marker when we look at his roster. And with the character portion here, all this is fine, no weaknesses. This is all good, modding is strong. That's a, that's a very fast Moff Gideon. And we're looking at a six star profundity, but yeah, we'll, get, we'll probably get to fleets. With the hot bot information, what did I do? With the hot bot information here, 
we are looking at a stronger guild. Here's what I like to pay attention to, the stats, the Grand Arena stats. His undersizes, like I have an advantage, but this is a strong number. This is a guy who plays with undersizes, and when we get to his banner count, it's going to show, because I don't see how he got the banner total he did without undersizes. The clears are strong, but it was the one thing I was hoping for, is his participation is actually a little inconsistent. He either fully participates or does a battle or no battles and loses. And I was kind of hoping he wasn't going to show up because last night he had done a single attack. I was hoping he was done for the day or done for the round. As we go through here, the relic distribution we saw, but you can kind of, I just kind of prefer this presentation. You can see and feel much more top heavy he is. The advantage is there. Side by side, he's just all the modding, everything he's stronger on. So as we jump into here, and it's a rainier day. We're probably going to have some more ambient noise today. And that's the wrong column. And so he's got... Oh, he's going to go deep. Okay, let's check out Second Sister. Yeah, she's at 297. I just looked. I'll show you guys since we're here. So he's got 27 characters at 300 speed or higher. And that's actually, considering how good his mods are, not terrible. Not, not the scariest. That could have been far worse. That's kind of more in line with a lot of what we've seen and closer to he's my roster doesn't match his but it's in that neighborhood now could have been could have been much worse so here's what we got to deal with 2005 banners we got two hours left in the round and I did get some holds so for him to have been tripped up a couple times and for him to still get over 2,000 banners that's pretty intense so here's what we're looking at. The boss squad here got a hold. Everyone else went down in one. Down here, we get another hold from Melgus. Down below, I don't remember if I got any here. No holds on the back wall. And fleets, there was no hold. So, and he did not go light on defense. This is a guy who knows his counters because here's what he set down. He's got gas. Qui-Gon, Finn, Melgus, Grand Inquisitor. And then down below, you can see two GLs. We basically have a GL wall here. And with this GL wall, well, we, there's Starkiller as well, but there's Jabba, JMK, Lord Vader, and Rey. Now, I have planned this out, plotted this out. There's actually, if everything went right, there is a way to win this. I just, with his modding, it's not gonna happen because I don't have all the counters I need at the right strength. Like take Lord Vader, for instance. If I had a proper Fennec counter, we might be able to take that out and I might be able to win. It is a weaker version of it, so maybe we get lucky, but I basically would need Fennec to win that for me to get through it. I would need my Star Killer to win up against his Ray. JMK, maybe Grand Inquisitor, maybe a JMK Mirror. We'd use Dr. Afra up against Jabba. And then Star Killer, usually we've been doing JMK lately, but if I need JMK to clear his JMK, then we're talking about using my JML to beat his Star Killer or trying to do like a Star Killer Mirror, which I don't think would go well either. So technically, we're going to give it a shot. We're going to see if I get the luck. I don't feel good about it. I don't think it's going to happen. And then up top, we could Treya the Grand Inquisitor. We'll just look at it right now. What we can do here is we can Treya the Grand Inquisitor. We can throw gas at Melgus. Finn... We'd have to be careful, but there's options. We could do like a Vader or a Malak thing up against Finn. Qui-Gon would be fifth brother. And then Gas. If I don't use Grand Inquisitor down below, I could use Grand Inquisitor there. Otherwise, it might be a little tough getting through Gas. I'd have to think about it if we, had a, we'd, if we have other options or not. But you can see, given the right investment I have a path forward and it's why I've been emphasizing for my roster why I want to be focusing on going after a number of those relics that I don't have right now particularly on that Fennec squad because I would love to have a workable Lord Vader counter and I think that's where we're going to start let's just see there because then we can make a determination if we want to go risk some more of these squads like technically i could risk grand inquisitor up against jmk if i thought that was my only way to clear this territory and we, once we 
put some of the cards in play, we can make it dis- we can make decisions from there. Also, I don't think my gas is going to beat that Melgus, but hopefully. Let's let's begin. So th- this is what we haven't looked at it in a while cuz the since the data since we have uh, Afra I haven't had to resort to this too too much. But with that Afro Datacron expiring, I'm going to need alternate options up against Lord Vader again. This is what I've been using. I don't use Mando because he's at... Here, let me scroll this up because my head's in the way. There's a look at my Mando. He's gear 12. Not great in this scenario either, otherwise, uh, regardless. But having both gear 12s on Zam and on Grief Karga, this has always been risky for me. I use Zam because of the Ami and the Ami with those extra stats gives me a slightly better shot. It helps keep both her and Grief alive, but what usually happens in these Thrawn versions is he's going to throw down Fracture, and depending on who it lands on, it could mess up the entire thing. Yeah, that right there, it's, it's probably over, but maybe he's fast enough where the fracture comes off quickly. Technically, we could call an assist, but why? This, we're just not going to do anything. And it, it, with the cooldown, how the cooldowns work, we'd probably get a turn again, but it's just also like, what's the point? I'm going to hold that. I don't like to use it unless Daze is on or there's a lot of dots and I feel like everything's low. We just, I just want my shot. Okay, here's my shot. Don't die on me, Zam. All right, it's over. It's over. It's too early. I need, I need those stats. Yeah, we'll, we'll heal up. I guess I could have been healing up a little bit more. I was being a little conservative with it. But I don't think it would have made too much of a difference on Zam. Don't die on me. Yeah. See, here's the thing where maybe, like, if I had Mando, if I had these characters at Relics, I would have been able to get to the contract very quickly and early and taken out Thrawn. And we'd have more of a shot. I mean, maybe that would have been worth trying regardless. I just, when I've tried it in the past, my Mando just dies. He doesn't last long enough. Like, the, the Zam Omicron, it doesn't even really feel like it, but the Zam Omicron really keeps, makes a massive difference in those Gear 12 characters surviving. And in 5v5, it works. It doesn't really work in these kinds of scenarios. So that was basically my only shot to clear this front territory, if that counter worked. Obviously it didn't. So I'm going to be less concerned about this. I'm going to try and clear the t top uh, territory. Going by the original plan, as if the lower ter territory worked, because I still want to see how some of those counters would have gone, particularly the gas one, and then we'll, we'll clear fleet, and it's going to be a shorter video. So I don't think Grand Inquisitor is great on defense. Just because he can be easily countered by a weak Treya squad. But it does eat a Treya squad. And maybe if you put Treya on defense, because she's great on defense. Especially like Nihilus lead is super annoying on defense. In those kinds of scenarios, then maybe Grand Inquisitor is a good option. At least while the Datacron is still active. But right now, like the, this is a strong counter. 
Although I think this is the first one I'm facing where my opponent has the Grand Inquisitor Ami. I think the previous ones just did not have it. And the way that he's split up his Inquisitors probably weaks him for using Inquisitors on offense, but depend he might have specific counters he's intending to use them on where he likes some of the remaining leaderships. I'm going to basic it, because I feel like one of the things I don't like is taunting too early with Scion. The AI is dumb. Like, I've got Torture on Nihilus, but they're attack they were attacking Treya. Like, that's terrible AI. We'll probably find, try and test the Tuscan somewhere. I mean, it's probably going to be terrible and dumb. But I'd like, maybe we'll do it up against the Finn team. Try out the Tuscans. I don't think there were, or was there AoEs? Was, who was Finn? Was he with the Resistance? If Finn's with the Resistance heroes, we're not going to do it. Because it's not going to work. Maybe we do it anyway. We're losing regardless. We're doing it anyway. We're, we're going to have some fun. Where we can. This is the type of defense I'm surprised I don't see more often. A lot of people save a lot of their GLs for offense. I don't think they're comfortable with some of the non-GL counters. Maybe just don't have them available. This guy, though, seems like he's very comfortable with them. Like he has Dr. Aphra. He threw Dr. Aphra at my Jabba. Then had plenty of things left over. Just He still had like at least Sith Eternal Emperor and JML. Unless they're on the back wall. Maul. He has, he has options. He has good options. Yeah, Finn Resistance Heroes. Let's do it right now. I expect with one AoE, the Tuscans are going to go down. They're just... At 3 stars, gear 11. This isn't going to cut it. And... They're very strong offensive characters. AoE should at least take out Warrior. Chieftain might have a shot. It also just depends on speed. Maybe I get the protection up in time. I, I doubt it. The big, big assumption is that they don't die right away. But if they don't die right away... This ha has a small shot. Oof. Oof. We're still alive. <laughs> okay. Because once the momentum gets high enough, um, we can do some damage. I just need to not die in the meantime. Let's get that protection back up. We don't have a way to heal, though. The next AoE is going to take us out. But with, with higher momentum, they're going to start being stunned. Um, come on, give me the 15. Yes. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Where's... Why aren't the Tuscans back? Is it that... Why is the Omicron being broken? They're... I should have two Tuscans right now. Where's my other Tuscan? They can't. I mean, we we at least have one with our taunt. 
But I should have two Tuscan Raiders right now. Unless I'm forgetting something. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. But th if I get through Poe, this is awesome. Oh my god, I love you so much, Tuscans. This is great. This is everything I wanted. This is a huge result in my mind. Three stars, gear 11. And with the Omicron, I think not working as intended. We got another big hit coming up. Awesome. Awesome. Just awesome. Oh my god. That's that's the match highlight. I gotta put out a video on those guys. I think we're going to do Melgus last. We're going to do Fifth Brother here. So Fifth Bro and I've been doing Second and Eighth. Because I have this Data Crown. Which I need to re-roll that level 3 ability. Okay. Fine. <sighs> I kind of want protection up before I do this. I don't like how my guy looks. I'm going to I'm going to do it. Okay, we got damage immunity, protection up, now let's take him out. Ugh. That's why I didn't like the looks of it. This is the first time that I've lost with Fifth Brother since the Data Crown's been around. I got to, I I was feeling very confident about it. It's too bad. I think I I think it did hurt me though waiting to get the damage immunity up because it it allowed him to get cooldowns in a better position for that AoE. I would have had an extra attack, but I just didn't like my sh chances. All right, here's what I'm thinking. Hmm. We're going to do JML versus gas. Because JML was the one character I didn't have a specific intent for. So that will still allow me to do everything up against the lower territory. Uh, and we have at least a little bit, f bit of fun, see how some of those things go. Like, I think it would be interesting to do Grand Inquisitor versus JMK, just to show how that looks. Which means I need to decide who I'm going to be pairing with him here. I have some options. I also don't want to go too... How about Old Ben? And Ayla? Because then we still get to use a data crown. That's good. Everyone can inflict debuffs. 
Is this the first full Relic Squad we're using this match? <laughs> My roster sometimes is just hilarious. Uh, okay. Get that little percent health damage. Now start calling in my friends. Nice. Make sure we select the right one. Don't want to do any dumb things on accident like I've done in the past. Um. There we go. At least that. If I brought in better Jedi, maybe we'd make a little more progress. We're fine. I know I wasn't going to get any assists, I was just spreading the inherited teachings around. So I could be, uh, just make progress towards the ultimate. Could have called in Luke, I just didn't, didn't care as much. Now I want to give him a little protection up. Because I'm not liking the looks of this. Are you guys kidding me? What is going on? I can't believe I'm going to lose this. Outrageous. Okay. That's why you don't want to bring in bad Jedi with him up against good teams. The cooldown increasing was getting it annoying. Okay, we're going to do Gas Melgus. I think we'll grab the Tenacity. Yeah. And see the quantity of Data Crons that I have, but I didn't get all that far with the slicing this time. Good timing. This could go poorly. Oh, really? Okay. Fallen, go down. Perfect. Let's throw an armor shred. Gonna save it. Maybe I should have used it. Let's do Tenacity up, because I'm going to get... The aerial advantage doesn't do much up against Melgus, but the Tenacity up, I'm going to get a little bit more protection up. 
didn't really make too much of a difference. Is there something fun we can use to clean up the Jedi? I don't think so. I wish we could t test Cal right now. What JTR is kind of fun, but I don't, I'd like something more fun than JTR. Hondo is a little fun. Savage is kind of lost. You know what? We haven't done sortie in like forever. Let's do sortie. To sortie T three M four and your friend can be IG eighty eight because we're not going to use you. Okay. Don't like that. Nobody's allowed to die yet. No. I don't want to lose spare parts. That counter's going to hurt. Nope. And this is why you don't see me use Sortie all that often. <laughs> okay. What else can we have fun with? Here's a bad idea. You know what? I need to put Finn back on defense. Well, we've never used Zori in 3v3, so let's give it a shot. I wonder if Rose makes more sense than Poe. I'm going to go with it. Because Finn can taunt. It's the tenacity synergy that I want. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Let's not even mess around, let's just take him out. I'm s impressed she took that hit. Yeah. Anybody else new? Didn't we have one other newish character? Let's just throw in Akbar, Leia, Ahsoka, and be done with it. If I were ever to do a territory war Omicron, and um, there's there will be a future in which I will do a territory war Omicron, but the Fulcrum one's probably the first one I'm gonna do. Not for any great reason. I just like I just like her character.
Jeez. Can you take some multiple hits, Leia? Jeez. Alright, we're done goofing off. Well, no, we're not. This, this whole thing is a goof. <laughs> okay. We're gonna do fleets. Fleets, then we are gonna go to the front territory and to goof around with that. Because we're not clearing that territory. This one will clear. Yeah, this is gonna be straightforward. Not messing around, just profundity. Give us some presets, CG. Fleet ones I'll use more consistently. I just don't like with the squad selector, you're just like scrolling and scrolling and scrolling to find certain squads where you're creating a bunch of different things to organize it and it's just, as the game gets larger, it's becomes more and more. Let's, this is why talking is so dangerous while you do these things. I almost did the wrong thing. And I do not like the RNG so far. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Pretty solid. Yeah. Call in the Outrider, get a bunch of those assists. Don't waste your time with the Phantom. Let's dispel these buffs. Cleanse. Okay, now that we don't have to worry about the taunt, we're going to try and take out Slave 1 before the Seismic Charge, which we do. Ultimate. Dispel. Just taking him out because he's easy at this point. And Rakes really doesn't matter. Let's just auto. I don't care. Although that's why I don't like autoing. That was a waste of a turn there, Falcon. Okay, we are going to do Malevolence. He saved a lot of firepower for offense. With Fleet. You know, even though this is like, this is short for some of the recent videos, but I'm a little concerned where... We're at a point where CG really needs to be considering adding more defenses. Uh, these videos are getting crazy long. And just even these, this, this play is getting very long. 
And it seems unsustainable that CG could just keep adding defenses to Grand Arena. I don't know what they do. Wait, that's almost an error. Never do that. When going up against the Chimera, bring out a reinforcement. I'm gonna hit this while we can. You know what, let's take out Vader. Now it should be, no, not quite yet, okay. Now, never mind. Soon, soon. Now the ultimate. See it right there? If I didn't bring out that reinforcement, we would have just lost. That's how this flea gets holds. Take out Reaper because he's driving turn meter if we take out anybody else. Okay. No. So I think I've been bringing that up a lot about why you when you do that counter you got to bring out another another ship but usually i haven't needed it this is the first time where it has played out where if i hadn't brought out that reinforcement we would have lost it's critical the first time in a while like, if you go back deep enough you'll see me lose with it and that's when i made that adjustment Why is it at six stars? You know what? Because I have that at farmed at seven stars. I just probably saved it for a video and then forgot I could do it because I haven't looked at ships in a while. Okay, protection up. I'm gonna just focus on Rose. Because she's got, she taunts easily. I like this fleet, it's fun. I don't like how everyone prioritizes the scythe though. Don't freeze on me. Okay, good. I just don't, no Jawas today.
Come on, do some damage, people. He's gonna get to the ultimate at this rate. Let's get that formation back. If I, because the one thing is, you don't see me use the defender because the starting lineup has been working very out very well for me. Although you did see the defender last time when uh, the scythe went down, but we were going up against the profundity. All right. Now for this. It's not really going to be nonsense, though, because a lot of these teams are going to work or do pretty well. I wonder if we had a different way I could have handled... There's some ways I could handle Joppa, right? No, see, if I would have played this differently, like, let's say I did Dr. Afra up against Lord Vader, which does work, then JMK up against Jabba... But then I'm in a situation where what do I bring up against JMK? Like, my his modding is good enough where my JML is going to lose. Maybe that would have been a better shot, though. Yeah, don't know. Just rethinking it where the other route I could have taken, maybe. Let's do Starkiller. Starkiller's fun. I'm just glad that we were able to do the Tuscans. Because that was really interesting. I think it was a very good result. It does raise questions, though, if I want to save Tuscans for offense. I think it means the Tuscans need to be for offense because Tuscans were an interesting defensive. They, they per, on the Swaga meta stats, Tuscans do well. Okay, what do I want? I'm gonna go with the basic until the tenacity down is there. I don't really think I want. I don't care about the offense up really. I'd rather get the stacks going. Now I want to land the tenacity down. And you know what, let's throw a stagger. Okay, that's fine. Although maybe I should have made some progress on Ben before Lifeblood was on him. Probably would have been a good idea. You know what, let's heal up. Yeah, let's do it. That could have been a bad call. I don't know. I'm just put throwing some debuffs and stuff down. We're not... 
I guess I technically... I, I should have tried to take her out. I don't know why I played it like that. I think I got in my own head because damage immunity is on these other characters. Nope. All right. So that's fine. You know what we're going to do? It's not going to work, but we're going to throw Wampa in. Because here's the crazy thing is, if Wampa did work, we could still technically... No, we couldn't. No, we couldn't. That wouldn't, that wouldn't matter. No, because then what would we, we would do? Instead of JMK here, we would do... But I would still need to clear... No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're still going to do it, but it, it's not going to make a difference. Um, sure. Although, you know what maybe a better choice would have been? Wampa can... If you get JMK down to just JMK, Wampa can do a cleanup. Let's let's do this. I do think we have the right RNG for me to uh, win this. Oh, the days though. We just got the days. Never mind. Never mind. No, well, let's take him out. So, curing immunity, we get the stuff and turn me, but we got a daze. Let's just try and take out Star Killer. No. Okay. Great. This is low percentage chance. You know what? Maybe I should, maybe it would be better to do turn meter than the. Because with the old Datacron set, the one that gave him the protection up with the dots, that was a no-brainer. Now it's less clear what is he's best with. I'm glad that worked, but that's like a 25% chance. It's not a great counter. I still only have... Oh, you know what we were going to... Never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. Never mind. We're gonna. What we're gonna do is Grand Inquisitor here. If this works, and I don't think it's going to, because it all comes down to mods and fast, fast ones don't really. This doesn't really work. And that's more in five v five. I don't even know in three v three how good this is. He's great against JML. This one's tougher. But if this works, we could get through this. But it's absolutely critical that this works. But I'm at zero confidence. Okay, we'll remove some turn meter here. Never mind, we don't remove turn meter. See, what I'd like to do is apply Torture, but he's going to take a... Wait, this removes... But we don't get any turn meter manipulation. That's right. That's why that didn't do anything. Because of how JMK works. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to... Equalize.
Okay, now we apply the torture. I can't even heal up my Grand Inquisitor. Do I want the Foresight? I think I'd rather do the heal, so I'm going to wait. But now we're dead. Foresight wouldn't have mattered anyway. Alright, it's over. That's why this it just doesn't work here. Yeah, so no miracle there. We will Dr. Afra Jabba. Or do we want to doctor him? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're done. We've done what we can. Let's take out Jabba and be done with it. But what you're going to see is, is if I had that Fennec counter, we would have got through this. Because I'm basically forced to make a choice now between which squad I'm not going to take out. Because we could have done Dr. Aphra up against Lord Vader, JMK up against Jabba, but then I got nothing to uh, take out JMK. I'm going to do JMK Mirror. Dr. Aphra up against one of them, and then I'm still left in a situation where I'm not taking out one of the squads. The win condition was Fennec taking out Lord Vader. Which I need two critical relics. Biggest one really probably being Mando and then maybe Grief. Because Grief's under stealth. I might be able to get away with just Mando. Alright, little armor shred action. Last shot to do anything with this torture. Awesome. And we got torture back. Sure, let's throw it on Bosch, take her out. I need to wait for another torture. But our potency mastery is getting pretty intense. I shouldn't have done torture. Why this? I'm just kind of like brain shut off at this point. I should have left torture for Jabba. Let's just auto it from here. Nothing to really cover today. I started my rewatch of The Last Kingdom that I talked about in the last video. Really, just really like that show. It's a fun show. All right, we're going to JMK Lord Vader. I don't I don't feel like doing a JMK mirror. Cuz mine's slower. I know it's not going to do anything and this will at least clear Lord Vader. Not that mine's slow. It's slower. I'm going to lose the I'm going to lose the, the tie. Not tie. I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose the mirror. All right. What do I want? 
There's enough tenacity going on, right? Had he set down JML and not JMK, we would we would we would have got through this. This is why you need a Fennec counter, and especially for my roster. Most of all, it's just critical that I, without the, having the GLs, need to have Fennec ready to go and be reliable. And the fact that I didn't is why we don't get a full clear today. Like with the with the rate at which I shouldn't have done that when I did I should have waited. Uh, th at the rate at which this guy gets uh, prevents hold clears or full clears, I bet his back wall is very weak. I don't even think anyone got to it from what I was seeing. Sure, sure. Okay. <sighs> yeah, I don't, I don't care. We're throwing it. I want the cooldown. I want the armor shred and I want to get the royal guard. Let's just do this now. Give me those ability blocks. Don't die on me yet. Okay, let's hit our alt. From here, we should be pretty good. That was a waste. I'm just, I can't stop myself. It's not really a big deal though, there's enough ways to cleanse in this. Here, let's do this. I can cleanse again now. I know I'm playing this horribly, it's just... I'm barely paying attention. Can I? S no, maybe I shouldn't have done that. All right, we're gonna put damage immunity on GK because the cat's thing was off cooldown and I didn't want to lose GK and we're kind of out of time
And there you have it. All of that cleared, except no way through this final one. And it, it's, it's the two things I need here. I need one, the biggest thing being a proper Fennec counter for Lord Vader. That you will see me have before any other relics that I have. It's just a critical thing. And the second thing is Sith Eternal Emperor. That's why he's he's almost certainly my next GL, even without knowing what the next one is. Um, because I need something that can take on some of these Jedi GLs. Or really just another JMK option. Because technically Grand Inquisitor... Well, no, here, actually, no. No, 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 no. Because Reva is about to become available. I, Reva's just going to take my guild a while. Because we don't know when the Grand Inquisitor event's coming back. Yeah, let's go big. So maybe Reva... I don't, I don't like calling her Reva. I hate that they gave her the name Reva because it kind of violates the whole premise of the Inquisitors being sisters or brothers. They don't have names, so... But because of just lazy storytelling, they decide they want to give her a name when everyone else is second sister, seventh sister, eighth brother, fifth brother, ninth sister. Like That's how it's supposed to be. And because it's a mouthful. Like Really, it's like a... You don't want to be calling somebody that. Nobody would speak like that. But it, it works like... It works in like a TV format. But um, that might become, become a good option for JMK, but it's kind of dependent on the unlock timeline, because it's not something that I'm in control of. So it's it's something like, like here, let's do a basketball analogy. Like They asked uh, Michael Jordan what the hardest part of a triple-double was, and this was re in relation to Russell Westbrook several seasons ago getting all the triple-doubles. And they asked Westbrook the same thing. What's the hardest part? Is the points the rebounds or the assists especially when you have like a guard who out of position and getting rebounds can be pretty difficult the points are obviously going to be the easiest part but both Jordan and Westbrook said the assists because it's the one thing they don't have control over that's all dependent on the other players and that's what something like third sister is it all depends on people's own priorities and people you, you have control over your own rosters. Don't feel like Inquisitors. Don't go after Inquisitors. Uh, I, I get it. I'm very understanding in that. There's a lot of things to work on. Like if you're, you want Jabba, Inquisitor, or Afra, I think the reason to go after Inquisitors is because you don't control the timeline, but he's about to become permanently farmable. Or not permanently farmable. He's, gonna, he's about to be permanently unlocked and accessible within the journey guide. So in that kind of scenario, it's even more understandable to not prioritize him in the same way. But I think because of the fleet aspects, because of how long the farm can be, I think it makes sense to go after Inquisitors and make sure you, you can contribute to Third Sister. Because we're next week, next week we're going to see her in Grand Arena. We're going to see the impact that she makes, what she can do up against these. Like, I'm going to be paying attention to it. Like, I don't watch a lot of Grand Arenas from other players, even though I should. Like, it's the type of thing that is important to do to make sure you're staying on top of things. But next week, I'm definitely going to be paying attention because I want to see, like, especially like Arnold's stream, because I know him at a minimum is going to be having third sister is seeing what she's going to do, how she's going to shake things up. Like, that's a critical counter. So maybe Sith Eternal Emperor is not the option to go, just because unlock timelines. And it depends on the new uh, the new GL that presumably is going to come out around the... or at least be announced around May the 4th, because it just makes too much sense for it to happen then. Um, maybe, uh, maybe is, is, is if, depending on what that GL can counter strongly, because each GL has different things that it's going to be best at. Like maybe this GL is going to be best at up against Jabba and Lord Vader or something. Maybe that's that's enough of a reason, or maybe it's going to be good up against Jedi. It all depends on how or it's going to be and who it's going to be. So we'll we'll see those. I'm I'm not committed to anything. Just collecting the resources to give myself the option to go in any direction I want. But the way that I'm thinking about it is Sith Eternal Emperor because of what it gives me, 
how it will open up my offense in Grand Arena. It's been something I've been lacking and wanting for a long time. And there you have it. The win streak is over. I think we had, so we were at three, four in this season alone. I think two from last season. So I think we got to about six, which is pretty solid these days in Grand Arena. It's getting a long win streak in the new format is tougher than it's ever been. But thank you for watching. Be safe out there, everyone. Be excellent to each other. This is Still Plays Galaxy of Heroes.